Josh. How are you going? I'm good. How are you today? Yeah, good, man. Good. Thanks for coming down. Appreciate it. I was happy. Yeah, so uh, was it a long drive? It was like 40, 50 minutes, but I've always loved the drive down to this area. Yeah. It's a nice drive. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, it's all right, I guess. Once you – oh, going north is pretty bad, going past Coburn. Oh, uh, yeah, once you get past Coburn, that, that huge like, – Bottleneck. Can I swear on this? Yes. Yeah. That shit is so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, oh, they've man. never been able to address it. They add lanes, but they only add, add a lane for like – for a couple of kilometers and then it yeah. bottlenecks again. So, and like the whole way through, you're just staring at the fucking faces on the, the train station. Oh, yeah. And I just like, <laughs> so, uh, there was one time I almost crashed because I was trying to figure out who it was and there was a text at the bottom. So I kept trying to inch closer, trying to figure out what the text was. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't realize that the car in front of me had stopped. Oh. <laughs> um, I looked down in time. But was, oh, yeah. Lucky. Yeah, that would have been so embarrassing. Lucky you're going at a slow enough speed. But the problem oh, yeah. with that is, is, You'll be driving along and you can do a hundred and then all of a sudden everyone stops. stops and, it's and if you if you just happen to zone out for like five seconds, you're fucked. Because yeah. I've I've now I've a few times <laughs> admittedly had to kind of pull in the emergency lane because you're oh shit. Yeah. And then the other problem is that you're like, I don't want to get rear-ended <laughs> by the guy behind me mm -hmm. if I hit my brakes. But um yeah, they've never been able to address that. That's the that's why I hate going to Perth, is go up there if we go to gigs. You always get to leave way early because you get stuck. Um, it's probably not so bad on a Saturday, but on Fridays. And then was it was it was pretty bad coming down as well, wasn't it, in the afternoon? Today? Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I was I was driving with a friend. I was, I was, I was okay. mostly okay. Oh, did you drop them off or something, did you? Oh, no. Um, so remember I told you I have that car group? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a lot of us. So I was driving home and I saw this Celsius drive by me with no plates. <laughs> and in my brain, I was like, I know that car. So I like pulled up next to him and I looked at him and he looked at me and he was like, so we just drove for a while. Oh, right. and oh like, I thought you meant in your car. With nah. You. So okay. we just driving and then we went through the Coburn spot um, and the traffic was so bad because some truck broke down in the middle lane. Oh, yeah. So the whole thing was bottlenecked to one lane. Yeah. For like the, oh man. That and was then fun. everyone's got to look. Everyone has to rub a neck mm -hmm. and then everyone slows down. And, yeah. Uh, and there's a cop there and he was staring at both our cars and I was like, oh. And he had no plates. Ooh. Yeah. But we were we were cool. I won't say his name for <laughs> just did a fuel run. Just did a fuel run. <laughs> yeah, no, my plate just fell off, bro. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so um your your car, you were saying you have a Sora. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So is that you've done a bit of work to it? No, not really, actually. No? It's it's stock. Um most of the work's on Buddy because it's a it's a I had to say, but it's an internet build. I I'm okay. building stuff for like the use for my business. Yeah. Um, so I don't actually even like get to do much with it. I just leave it and that's just, uh, okay. I refuse to let it turn into a money pit. That's mm. my like, cause I have other things I need to set up for. Oh, well, actually, um, I used to have a, um, a, a Falcon, um, oh, hell yeah. a bit of, you know, the Coyote one with a supercharger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, <sighs> my wife shouldn't listen to this because she doesn't know how much money I spent on that thing. But, oh, um, but, uh, I, um, the original motor on that, I blew up, um, the oil pump gears failed on it. So okay. obviously it starved the, uh, cams and, and all the, uh, timing gear or running gear up top of, um, of oil. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, so it did a whole heap of damage cause I was kind of stuck in traffic and then the oil light came on and then it just started sound like a tractor and I couldn't really pull over. Oh, in traffic. That is, that yeah, is and traumatizing. Like, fuck, fuck. And then when I could pull over, um, and then I rang the mechanic, the guy that's had done work on it mm -hmm. and, um. And he goes, how quick did you turn it off? And I said, oh, he goes, you got about probably less than 10 seconds in before it's a bin job. And I was like, are you serious? And I was like, fuck, man, I can't afford another motor or whatever. And he's like, oh, he goes, we'll try work something out. And then he, um, he got back to me and there was a guy that had a GT because mine was a GS. I don't know if you know the, the models, but, um, it's not like the one under a GT okay. under a Falcon GT. And this was a 2011 model. So kind of a latish model yep. um and um and yeah this guy had, had built this fifty thousand dollar motor and then the new um mustang motor came out in the in the states and that guy wanted that so then <sighs> they just built this motor and then he goes oh, i don't want this guy's like a, a lawyer for fmg or something so he had heaps of money okay yeah. and he goes oh i just i don't want that just fuck that motor off and i'll just have another i just want to build <laughs> this other motor now and this other motor's got like a flat plane crank, so it revs really high. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like 9,000 RPM for a V8. It's like so high, high torque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And um, and then um, so he go, he rang me up. He goes, look, this guy will sell you this for um, for for twenty grand. Cost him around fifty grand to build, and it's done seven hundred kilometers. And I was like, seven hundred. That's the crate engine at that point. Yeah, yeah. That's so nuts. yeah, it was all all um, had like all billet timing gear and all that stuff, and then uh, manly platinum pistons and rods and and um, four <laughs> racing <laughs> heads and and um, and then I bought a, a bigger supercharger and put it on that, and then I had it on ethanol and. Um, and I got the the battery put in the boot and a fuel system, a fuel cell in the in the um, engine bay and fuel cell in the engine bay. Yeah, what? <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, and then um, and then like a, a, a called a surge tank or whatever. Yep. Um, and then um, you know, I did heaps of stuff to it, and um, and that ended up that was just shy of a thousand horsepower out of the wheels. Jeez. That, yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> Where is it now? Oh, I sold it. <laughs> Regrettably, I, uh, every time I see a V eight now, I'm like, fuck, I wish I had my car, but. It was a headache. Like every time I would take it somewhere, um, just something would fuck up on it. You know, you oh, know what it is? Yeah, once you, project cards. Yeah, what is it what they say? You, you play, you pay. Mm-hmm. Um, once you get past that, you know, once you get past like 500 horsepower, I feel yep. like if something goes wrong, it's not like before where it's like a $200 fix. It's like $2,000 at least or $10,000. And it's like if this thing shits itself, that's like $50,000 down the drain and then I was just like oh and then I remember I um went to you know Ormsby Guitars yeah I, um, I don't know if you know Perry but he's, he's got a, something crazy he's hey? got a Ferrari and I was showing him my car and he was and he was like yeah and we we're talking about it and it was idling it was it was on like a 40 degree day and what had happened was all the engine bay got real hot uh, and then all the fuel started running back out of the fuel tank uh, out of the return line and then came out of the fuel tank onto the ground and I was like what what the fuck's going on here and I was like, shit, my car's going to catch fire or something. So then there was just all these dramas and I just got over it. And then I just said to, the, to my wife, I just said, you know what, I'm sick of this car. And then all my mates that did have V8s, they were all married with the kids, sold their cars or yeah. or um, working, um, you know, up north or whatever. Everyone moved on and I was fine. that Whenever I got in my car, I was always by myself and never had any mates. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like it was fun to drive but it was kind of boring. Because you're just driving this car. It's got heaps of power, but you can't really give a shit because there's no one around. There's no one fun. cares. Yeah. If you give a shit, no one cares. Everyone's like, oh, you're a dickhead or whatever. You know, exactly. Like bystanders. And um, so I was just like, oh, fuck it, I'll sell. I just bought a motorbike instead. Not anything crazy, but just something fun. Yeah, I only no, drive yeah. my car. Like when I'm going out with my friends, I drive the daily around yeah. every other time just so I have that like definition between fun and just. Yeah, that's right. Because I found when I was driving my car to work, at one point I didn't have a work car. So I'd drive <laughs> my car and then it gets past the point of it being fun. It's like the yeah. novelty wears off. And if anything, you get annoyed with how loud it is. And it had like a, um, it was auto, but it had a stall convert, you know, like a about two and a half thousand um, RPM stall. So okay. You know, it's like stop, start whenever you're yep. going slow and it's just a pain in the ass to There's drive. There's always that mental weight of like, it might yeah. break today. Yeah, no, that's right. So I was just like, you know what, um, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. So, no, <laughs> my car's like this high off the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah that's, that's, uh, that was another thing with it. You know, every time you go over a roundabout, you got to do the zigzag. Mm-hmm. Not roundabout, sorry, a um, speed bump. Even on roundabouts for me, my suspension's so soft that it touches the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the exhaust scrapes. Uh, the body, the, no, the diff scrapes. Oh, really? Yeah, I bunked the diff on a speed bump. And it, <laughs> oh, man, that like, I felt that to my soul. <laughs> I used to um go to TAFE years ago with this guy that had a Commodore in it. He had it right, the, the ass was um was really low. He'd chop the springs and the, when he'd give it shit, the fuel tank would scrape on the ground. <laughs> the fuel tank? 100%. Oh, that's death ready to happen. Holy, yeah, oh like, my God. <laughs> no, I could not. <laughs> but um anyway so what's been happening music wise for you? music wise yeah. um so i know you interview a lot of metal artists yeah um uh, I'm, I'm gonna throw you one in a loop because um music wise in the next month i'm dropping my first single as a rapper okay um Is i've dropped stuff you've been put on instagram yeah. with stories oh, yeah. Cool. yeah sometimes um i post a lot of stuff on my stories and i've realized that people get confused about what i actually do mm. Um, but I've just kept doing it because I think it's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I do a lot of different things as a creative. Yeah. Um, but yeah, music-wise, I have Pinsa, I have mm-hmm. Heaven's Gate, I have um, my solo Angel stuff, mm-hmm. and with my car crew, I might drop some like more aggressive trap beats. Just oh, cool. like I figured it'd be cool to do an album where it's like mm. 
It's just an album to drive to. There's no yeah. there's no vocals, just something in the background. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so in the next month, just angel stuff, really. That's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Some um, because I was, I was I figured it was your stuff, but I didn't know. I didn't know if you were like mixing stuff for mates, because or something like that. But it sounded pretty cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You seem like you're um pretty gifted with the music, and you got a lot of um creative output by the looks. It looks like you're always doing something. Yeah. Um, you know, you you got your like your your car scene stuff, and then you were saying, do you have like a clothing? Yeah, I have a clothing yeah, brand. Clothing brand, and then you got all these bands and. So you keep pretty, um, pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fun life. I think um, yeah. there's always the risk of it, like you know, just falling off at some point. Yeah. Um, but I figured I'm gonna just have some fun. I'm yeah. I'm 23. I still got a bit of time before like. So yeah. Right. So I was yeah. like, I, I want to see what I can make. I want to leave a mark before yeah. I settle down. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good perspective to have, because uh, it's it's really hard when you. Um, when uh, other people are um, relying on you um, for responsibilities and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good, especially if you're, I don't know if you're single, but if you're single or whatever, or if, you know, you're young, you don't get as many responsibilities. and But then yeah. they, they pile up pretty quick. <laughs> they do. So I'm like, I'm just making the most of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm also considering just like slowing it down and focusing on setting myself up because um, yeah. I want to get back into photography as a yeah. media company and also like into interior design again yeah well wow, man that's cool because you do art, um like um you do like an album artwork as well don't yeah, you? yeah um graphic design graphic design sorry yeah <laughs> it's um, like uh, it, it, a lot of it's artwork for albums yeah um but it also falls into like clothing and um into like um product design like stuff like this for my crew and stuff oh yeah um, right that's i'm cool. not gonna plug it on oh you can yeah. if you want <laughs> I don't care, yeah. Luckystars.jp.net. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's um, it's just things that I like to make because I, I yeah. find it more rewarding when um, I have a physical product for me to hold and be yeah. like, I did this with my own hands. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I went through a factory, but like, it's like yeah. I designed yeah. these. Me and my friends all put like our pain and our our trauma and all that into a product yeah. or into a song, mm. and then at the end of the day, it's like. Now it's here. It's in one place. I can forget about it, or I can I can just have it. Yeah, and it's, it's like better it's, if it's physical like that too. Because fine with like digital stuff, especially music now. Yeah. Once you put it out there, people will just hear it, and then it's on to the next song. Whereas if you get like a CD or whatever laying around, you're kind of going to see it, and you it's might be tangible. Like, Shit, I haven't, yeah, I haven't heard that for a while. Whereas if yeah. it's digital, it's out there with the millions of other songs on Spotify. It's going to get lost yeah exactly eventually you know um there's only that small window of relevance i guess compared to like a physical medium and it's just it's just cool having physical stuff like i remember um when i was younger just um just i used to go to the cd shop and just buy cds purely off the like, artwork mm -hmm. because i wasn't really using the internet much or anything like that and and i just remember going oh Fucking this looks cool. And then you get home and it's like a lucky dip. It might be the shittest thing you've ever heard. But then oh, you buy it really based good. off the artwork and yeah. how it looks and how it feels yeah. and the way the tracks look on the back. And I love yeah. that. And also, the, you know, um, the way the the tracks are um, listed, like the artist intends you to listen to that in a certain um, order. Whereas when people listen to stuff on Shuffle now, just on their Spotify, that's going to get lost, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But I feel like with the new age of music, the attention span is so much shorter. Oh, it is, yeah. But that's there is also a beauty in that. Yeah. Because then you don't need a lore of a band, like the history of a band to no. really appreciate it. You can go based off like, I like your sound on this song. Mm. And as much as it's a detriment, I think, it's also like everyone's now in the same playing field. Yeah. with tiktok and all that like even like soundcloud rap mm. even though it wasn't like you know it wasn't the peak of music yeah it was still a style which became so easily accessed the same way i got into graphic design with the attention span being so shut and the internet being so big mm. everyone could be an artist and i love that because then I'm, yeah. I'm compared to someone else solely based on how my brain works as a creative compared to yours instead of how much money you have to that's, pay studios right. and stuff yeah, yeah that's a that's a good point it is, yeah, and um, it's, it's now, yeah, it's, it's so easy to get your music out there to people as well. You don't have to, um, 
you know, back in the day, I'm sure it would have been pretty difficult um, if you're trying to hand out like cassettes or something <laughs> like that. And, you know, it'd be so hard to get noticed, I think. Exactly. And a lot of my, um, like, I won't name drop, but a lot of my artist friends have like social anxiety and a lot of these issues where like going back in time, like actually having to network face to face, Yeah, the internet removes that. I can network as yeah. a faceless entity now and, and I yeah. love that because then you can move so much more freely. Yeah, you can. And yeah, um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's a, it's, it's cha- everything's just changed so much though. And, um, and now you look at bands and a lot of their, their social media is a big part. It's almost how they portray themselves on their socials is more important than the music sometimes. Exactly. If you see them, that they've got some gimmick or something like that. It's almost, I guess, like when Slipknot came out with masks or something. Yeah. Well, now people's social media is like the new thing. If, you, if you've got something edgy on there or, or whatever, you would do some really short reels or whatever with some cool edgy stuff, you can catch people's attention. And there's probably not everyone can do that either. You know what I mean? I see some bands that put out like a – a reel or something and it's so clever and I'm like man I wish I could think of that because it captured me whatever they did in that like 10 15 seconds on that reel was really fucking cool but there's like an art to that and a knack to it that mm. that you just can't you can't like learn as well you know some people have got this like um innate kind of thing like you 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 seem like you have that you're just really creative and you'd probably really be good at that kind of thing I think when it comes to stuff like that, it's also based off not just how your brain works, but also just like what you have to work with. Yeah. Um, Because, yeah, like you said, it's publicity stunts, which really catch the attention now. And a gimmick like Alpha Wolf, like Sabian from Alpha Wolf wears this face mask. Yeah. Um, And I've always loved it because he started with like a, like a bandana balaclava type thing back when um, I think it was Dark Souls, like 2014. Okay, yeah. Um, and then he moved to the face mask and committed to this, like, Japanese cyberpunk tech wear aesthetic. Um, and at that time when he started that, it was completely different. And just watching him do that as a kid when I was, like, 16, seeing this crazy band take off after, like, they've been, like, at this level for a while. Yeah. It was so impressive to me. Where um, That's actually what taught me how to move just by watching that it's like i need to give you something that catches your attention and then the same concept comes into like reels and stuff depending on what content i have so when i make content i'm actually shooting as much as i can um and i'm going between low energy and high energy and i think that contrast is what i've realized really catches yeah like with bands and stuff you do a reel you start it on like like a more chill frame then when the impact comes in, everything ramps up in energy, keeps yeah. you like locked in. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I've seen work best from my experience. But I don't believe that like most people can't do it. I think it's just a learning curve. And ev- yeah, yeah. yeah, most most of everything we can do, it's all learnt by trial and error. Yeah, that's that's fair. Actually, that's true. I think though, um, like younger people that are growing up in this age of it will will. Um, will uh, make use of it easier i think obviously that's obvious though isn't it really well, that's gonna happen if everyone's on TikTok and stuff they've kind of you think that way don't you really it kind of curates you it the algorithm actually puts you in a good spot sometimes like i've i'm on sound design and cinematic TikTok, so i'd be scrolling and i don't feel bad doom scrolling for like a few minutes now because i'll yeah. just be looking at videos of people on like showing you how to edit like films or, or do certain sound design things and all the info is there like niche stuff which i wouldn't even have thought about i saw this video a while back um where someone broke down a sleep token song on tiktok mm. um and he started the video with hi synth talk we're breaking down sleep token today and that instantly caught me like some dude's face in front of the camera and i watched the whole thing and i learned um and i i think that it's amazing that yeah it's all there ready for you to learn and then apply yeah there's so much um so much handy stuff on tiktok and i find that people have written tiktok off because of the teeny stuff that you know dances and the annoying shit you see people doing in public Mm -hmm. annoying people but if you if you actually look up there's there's heaps of just interesting stuff for people creating things and and um, there's like videos for pretty much everything you can think of on there and hacks for things. And Yeah, <laughs> I've seen crazy shit. I've seen some live leak stuff on, t- on TikTok. Oh, and yeah. I was, 
But um, I, as, <laughs> as much as I also like like TikTok, I, I also have to like say that I've I've made a point to stay away from social media unless yeah. I have to post something. Yeah. Like um, I respond fast because my phone's always like in the corner. But, yeah. Um, I don't like having it control my life. No, no. It's, it's hard now as well because I find that I've just got a habit of if I'm idle, I'll just pull my phone out of my pocket. Like if I'm on the line out of the shop, I'll just pull my phone out of my pocket because I don't want to awkwardly stand there because I get like social anxiety and I'm like, it's weird. I, I just need to get my phone. I need to distract myself. And mm-hmm. I don't want to look at people. I don't want people looking at me. <laughs> so, I, I do that. But I stare at my home screen or I open <laughs> Subway Surf. <laughs> Subway Surf. It's, it's such a good game. Like, I know there's like <laughs> newer still games. Around? It's still it's still around. Maybe not crazy, but like I don't know. I feel like I Subway Surf is just a good game. Yeah, yeah. I've like, played for days. <laughs> and Angry Birds, they got into that. Race. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's a good game. That is, it's changed heaps now. The Angry Birds. Yeah, no, it's all like monetized. Not a fan of the new Angry Birds. You, you can die like five times, and you got to like pay to do it again. Yeah, or like microtransactions and monetized, yeah. and that's what they're doing now. Though I guess they've mm. everyone's figured that out. And they do that with um. Um, like all video games now. I'll, I'll play a lot of video games, and, what do you play? Um, and now it's like they sell you half the game at the shop when you buy it, and then the rest is DLC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's literally Destiny. Yeah. Um. Like with my like with Lucky Stars, we play Destiny a lot mm, yeah. of nights. Um. I built the whole internal team as a support group. Oh, cool. So we'll just play Destiny or whatever games or watch movies together. And holy shit, they'll be like, oh, do you want to play Destiny? Do you want to play this level? And I'll be like, I'm not paying 40 bucks to play a fucking 20 minute game. <laughs> like, I'm not, I just, I refuse. Yeah, I, yeah. So I'll just sit there and play Subway stuff while they're playing <laughs> Destiny. Oh, then, yeah. Well, I caved. I never, ever, ever buy DLC, ever, because I just hate the idea of it. But oh. um, oh, one, one I've bought was the um, Dark Souls 3 DLC because I love Dark Souls. Yeah. So I was like, and I knew that that was good quality shit. Mm-hmm. That's not just like skins. That's legit, you know, new areas and stuff like that. Um, but I play COD with one of my workmates. Okay. I've been off work for nearly a month now, um, you know, with that surgery. And yep. and um, I'm so fucking bored. How is that surgery healing going? Oh, yeah, I went to the doctors today. It's going okay. But, uh, yeah, it's not healing up as good as I thought it was going to. But it's not a sore, but it's still not great. But... Yeah, but uh, yeah, when I go there, <laughs> it's it's going okay. Thanks um, for asking. But um, but yeah, um, so I've been bored as hell. So I was playing COD, um, Modern Warfare Two Deathmatch, and um, and uh, I saw that some guy killed me with some gun. I was like, what the fuck gun's that? And I googled it, and it's in the uh, battle pass. And I don't, and I'm like, I'm not fuck that battle pass. I hate that shit. And then I was so bored, and I was like, I'm buying it. <laughs> I want that gun. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of life if you don't treat yourself every yeah, now and then? but it's just like, I just hate that. No, I feel so <laughs> bad about it. I, I used to grind Apex. Yeah. I love that game. It's like one of the few games where you don't have to pay to win. Yeah. But I just got bored of the skins and I bought a skin. Yeah. And I bought a skin and I was like, I can't believe I bought a skin. <laughs> so um, if anyone in Lucky Star sees this, I am not buying any fucking DLC. Stop <laughs> asking me, please. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> I, was, I remember ages ago I was going to buy an Xbox Series X because I wanted to play Forza. What's a Series X? Oh, not Series X, sorry, Xbox One X. What's the X? Is that like just like a hell bougie Xbox One? Oh, well, <clears throat> they, um, the last generation was the Xbox One, then they had the Xbox One, H, One X, which was like a uh, like the, their answer to the PS4 Pro. There's a PS4 Pro? Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Um, or do you play PC? I play PS4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a PS4. I didn't. I didn't not hear about the Pro. Oh um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So there was. So I had like a you know upgraded RAM or CPU or something like that. Okay. Um, and then then there's the so it was like PS4.5 and then the PS5 come out. Okay. Um, and then the Xbox's answer to PS5 is the Xbox Series <laughs> X. So dumb the name I reckon. But I remember I was looking on um, Marketplace and um, I was looking for Xbox One X because I wanted to play Forza because mm. I didn't have an Xbox. And um, someone on there was selling theirs and they must have cracked the shits or their wife must have told them they had to sell it. But he said he had like $1,800 worth of Fortnite skins on there as well. I was like, what the? What? Who does that? Yeah. Even um, I, I used to work away um, at um, some FMG mines up north and there was mm. a guy that I would work with and he would spend his whole paycheck on um, 
on um, oh, what's it? is it Raid Shadow Legends or something like that? Yeah, Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, yeah. I used I to spend like ads. three grand a week oh, on man. shit like that, and and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> at, at some point, I feel like that's just like too excessive. <laughs> but yeah. it's not my money, so I can't. Yeah, but I was because he was always broke, and I was like, hey, you always broke. Yeah. You're earning a lot of money. And he's three like, oh. grand is wild. Yeah, and he's probably. just three grand. He's just blowing. He goes, oh, I just, you know, and I was like, man, you need help. That's that's like, that's that's like addiction or something. That's like gambling, I guess, in a way. But um, it's just, that just happens with this social media and phones yeah, taking over everything. That's right. I still haven't played that game, though, but it doesn't interest me. I'm not really into those kinds no, of things. But I don't play much games anymore because... I just don't like getting lost in a world that isn't mine. Yeah, go. Okay. Because it's, it's nice, you know, like playing a game and losing everything for that moment, just in being like immersed in a game. Yeah. But I've just realized like, oh, like, why don't I just aim to make my life feel like that? Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. Yeah. Um, it's, it's wasted energy, really. Like sometimes I play games and then I'm just like, man, I can't believe I just sat here for like three, four hours. Uh, fuck that. I could have been working on music or something i feel like there's a trade-off though sometimes it's needed um yeah it's i wrote a bit of an yeah. escape exactly i wrote yeah. all of pinsa um over the span of like two weeks where i just took a break from work and when i wasn't writing i was just playing games or chilling out yeah and that was a good balance because if i didn't do that then my brain would have just been cooked the whole process yeah okay. yeah, yeah that's fair yeah it is, it is a good escape but um what where did you come up with the name pinsa <laughs> <laughs> is there anything story behind that yeah so um is it Pinsa or Pinsa Plus? Pinsa. Well, the Plus was just an addition. Yeah. Um, Be true. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I really like crabs. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Pinsa, <laughs> Pinsa is actually, um, there's a there's a deeper meaning to that name. I never really explained it. Um, whenever someone asks me the, the meaning behind it, I just, because I think it's funny. Just a crab um, fan. Yeah, just a crab fan. Just a cross um, fan. I like shellfish. <laughs> no, so, um, you know the... In, in war strategy, the pincer movement splits your force into two teams. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then if either if either side of the pincer gets taken out before you actually get a chance to execute... You can't close. You're done. Yeah. But if you get to pinch them, if you commit to the move and you do it mm. right, it's a high chance of success. Yeah. Pincer is, if I'm going to be honest, pincer is my last metal band. Okay. I don't really intend to do another aggressive band because that's an... I don't look at um, music as genres. I look at it as emotions. And yeah. I, for the last five years, have painted aggression and anger mm -hmm. and loss. And I am getting to a point where I want to grow past that. And that's why I've been pushing Angel and Lucky Stars where mm -hmm. I can... Because Lucky Stars is not just a car group. It's going to be a brand too and it's going to make music. Okay. I want to make different sounds. I'm, I started as an indie artist. So Pinsir is... Pincer came from my last attempt at a band. It's everything. It's mm. I'm going to commit to this. I'm going to do some crazy movement. Mm. And if I lose it in the process, it's cool because I had fun because I get yeah. to be in a band with Jackson, Jordan. Jackson, Jordan, Jack, and bassist, who I will not name yet. Yeah. But all Start these... Start with a J as well? No. Oh. <laughs> Our old bassist was a Jackson too, though. Oh, okay. So it's Josh, Jackson, Jackson, Jack, Jordan, and then... We're signed to Grayscale, and Grayscale have a Josh too. Oh. So the group chat's fucked. <laughs> yeah. And someone set Ashley's name to Jashley in the group chat. Oh, so yeah. So it's just, it's ruined it. Is that my phone? Sorry. No, it's okay. I did not realize. Isn't that like um, Dark Matter? All the guys in that band, everything's J, isn't it? Yeah. Um, that band's crazy. Yeah. I love them. I don't, I don't, cool I don't know them, but I've been trying to get one of them on here, actually. Um, I'm sure at some point it'll hopefully happen because yeah. I only recently discovered them. I'm actually live under a bit of a rock. Um, yeah. As far as like new bands and local bands. Um, and, um, yeah, I recently discovered their, um, it's claustrophobia, their EP or single or whatever it was they released recently. I'm not actually too sure. I'm a really bad friend. I, I don't listen to much metal at all. Yeah. Well, it's um, pretty cool, but yeah. They're very, they're very good at what they do. They are. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Very good songwriters. And they are, most importantly, very good people. Anytime I see Josh, um, the guitarist, or I yeah. see Jack, they're just lovely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of bands forget that, like, the persona they play on stage should never carry down into 
mm. the exterior world because I want to know you as a person and not have this weird. Yeah. And they don't do that. That's and good. Yeah. They go into this crazy character on stage. Oh, right, but yeah. if you ever have the chance to watch him, sometimes like sometimes Shaq's in like full makeup, sometimes he's not. Yeah. Um I do got beef with Jack because he made me film centipedes up close and I hate bugs. Oh. <laughs> this man has like big fucking centipede in a glass bowl and he's like, Can you do a music video for us? I was like, cool. So I'm like filming this thing with my hand in front of this like fishbowl <laughs> with a centipede like here. And uh, it's a traumatic time. Yeah. But I yeah, I'm not a fan of bugs. No, I can't do crawlies. bugs. If I see a bug and then like something touches my leg, I'm running. A bug. I'm running. I'm running. <laughs> um, I went to Marg's with my friends and there was this huge spider on the ceiling. Oh, and they, Spiders are, yeah. I didn't see a red dot. So I was like, cool. It's not a black widow. It's, it's Australia. We're fine. Mm. Um, and I was like, look. And everyone bailed. Um, apparently it's a white tip. And oh, they were like, oh, yeah. it's a white tip. And I'm like, <laughs> No yeah. Bite, yeah, yeah, I was like, I see the white. Like, well, that doesn't mean anything. They're like, oh, if they bite you, your skin falls off. <laughs> yeah, I think they. Oh, I think it's a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently you can get like some um, necrofasciitis or some, whatever the fuck. Jesus. I'm saying it wrong, but it can. I think it's just bacteria they have on their fangs or something like that that can um, make your skin have a bad reaction. And I don't think there's like a cure for it. I think you have to get like skin grafts or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. I was sitting here the other day and that curtain, I just happened to be, I don't know why, I just came in here and I was like, oh, I just want to quickly fuck around with something. And I saw a red back crawling up that curtain. And I was like, fuck, I'm so glad I was just sat in here and I just went crazy with the fly spraying here because um, I'm arachnophobic, I hate them. Yeah. No, there's none in here, trust me. I, I, I went crazy <laughs> with it. making sure I ain't done today. <laughs> um, and uh, I was thinking, man, luckily I saw that because that kind of like that curtain, my feet are down there all yeah. the time. Yeah, oh, true. Like, luckily I just happened to come in here because heaps of times I'm just not in here, you know. Yep. Um, and I'm like, luckily, how's that for just timing that that happened to just walk up the curtain then? So um, I'm extra vigilant now. So I had a bright green spider drop from my roof liner in my car onto oh, my head. Oh, um, crash. I almost did. The only reason I didn't was because I don't have power steering in it. <laughs> so I pulled it. <laughs> the spider jumped and it jumped this way. And, and that was that. I pulled over, got out of the car and I was yeah. just like, I was just standing there for a sec. Like, damn, what do I do now? Like, it's, it's two in the morning. I'm alone. I'm not getting in that car with that fucking spider. Yeah. I'm also not staying out here in the cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just got Did back in the it? car. No. Oh, fuck that. I haven't found it. It's been like two months. Oh, it's probably dead now. Probably or it's got to like eat. a family in there. Now. Yeah, under the seat. Yeah, 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 like you open the seat one day and there'd just be like a like a dog sized spider, like a nest. Yeah, and Have like it'd be like big enough that they could speak to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you seen those um, those wolf spiders and they have all the babies on their back? Oh yeah, fuck that. No, I, used, I grew up on a farm and we had them and we used to vacuum them up because they would fuck. Oh, so creepy. And then I would vacuum them and spray fly spray in the vacuum while it's on. It's the easiest way to kill them because they're just because as soon as you squash it, they just go everywhere, everywhere, yeah. and then you're like, fuck, no, that's fuck genius. Me. I'm I'm not from Australia. I've only been here for like nine or ten years. I mean, it's oh, been a while. Yeah, because I noticed you have an accent. Where's that from? Singapore. Oh, okay. uh, my English accent is a mix from Netflix. Though I learned oh, okay. how to sound Western, so I stayed under the radar when I moved here because I sounded like a immigrant when I Singapore was cool. Singapore's cool. Um, yeah. Changi Airport's cool. It's big. Oh, that place is nuts. But moving here into this culture was such a different thing, especially with spiders. Some of them are huge. Yeah. Did not. I didn't think that was real. I thought it was an internet joke. There's no spiders in Singapore, huh? Not really. No. No. Yeah, my wife's from the Philippines. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, I have a bunch of friends from then. So, yeah, she's got an accent as well, similar. They kind of get – and Filipinos have like a – when they speak English, it's like an American. They're Americanized because a lot of a lot of <laughs> immigrants learn how to speak English from movies. Yeah, it's like the uh, they, you just pick it up over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're pretty I'm, Americanized over there too. They they're yeah, infatuated yeah, yeah. with American culture. Um, they are. Yeah, so <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I did want to ask you as well. Mm -hmm. Um, how how did you get into guitar? Like, how old were you when you started playing? How did you? Get uh, the instrument into your hands. What happened? Okay, so I was 15 in high school. So I was 14, probably eight, nine years. Yeah. There was this girl that was sitting next to me in the music class. <laughs> and this was music eight. You want to impress her? I was in year eight. 
Um, and I was like, honestly, I was in year nine. I didn't know how to play an instrument. I, I joined music ATAR because I figured like it'd be an easy thing to get a good grade out of, not realizing that music theory was a thing. Mm. Um, and I started flopping in it. And the teacher was like, hey, you should pick up an instrument because I don't know how to grade you. So I was like, I, um, so I went to pick up the guitar class because I could like run it with her. Yeah. Um, and then I fell in love with guitar. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I just lost focus on her because I was like, this is cool. Yeah. There's six strings and if I learn it well enough, I can create something with it that people could enjoy. Yeah. Um, so I fell in love with it playing like Ed Sheeran and recreating all these songs, which I've heard on the radio. Yeah. And then I'd like play it and be like, oh, I can do what this dude can play and he's made so much money off it and he's made a movement off his music. Mm. And I wanted to do that um, because I, I thought it'd be cool to like, you know, just be able to create music. Yeah. Um, and, and that one thing led to another and I found this video of Black Veil Brides like yeah. when I was like 16 and then... That was my first introduction to metal. Yeah. And then after that, I found like North Lane and Lowe's, um, Sabella and like mm. Youth Forever. Um, and that's still like my roots in metal. Yeah, and I don't cool. think I'd go anywhere from there. I love, it's I love combination. that combination, Especially Lowe's, I really like Lowe's. Um, but the, what happened? They released that um, mm -hmm. I Let It In album. And then the next thing was like something different, wasn't it? And they haven't released anything after that, have they? I don't think. Yeah. Um, there's a whole thing there. Uh, yeah, it's different, that album, though, isn't it? It's, there's a lot of no vocals on it, is there? It's like ambient, experimental. Yeah. I think they're just experimenting because they've only recently got the attention from that last album or two. Mm. And what people don't realise is once a musician gets that attention, you either commit to the sound that you blew up in or you find something that you want to make and hopefully people follow you. Yeah. And I think Loathe were like, fuck it, like we, we, we got the attention, but they they I don't I just think they didn't want to sell out and make what people expected them to make. Yeah. And even though like the ambient stuff might not have been as well received, to put something like that out after something like I let it in, mm. it's it's big move where I respect it because they they showed me that they're not just you know like I can play three chords they're like yeah creatives they're yeah. not just musicians like it's just they've painted a picture and they paint different pictures yeah and, and that's what the album becomes yeah that's so the person that comes to mind that's really good with that as well is uh you know Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree you know? yeah he makes them really sad ones hey yeah but he's yeah. done he's done like metal then he does like pop and then mm -hmm. He's just um, so talented. That's it. Fucking hidden memory. Um, there's a guy in Perth called Dom. I met him through a gas station. Oh, if you remember you, that. You, the gas station, is that where you sell gear? And, yep. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where um, I met a lot of people at the start. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and he showed me um, Steve, Steve Wilson um, and that song about, was it the school shooting victim? That, that this one song that he made. It was like a... Oh, um, was it called Way Out of Here? Probably. It's just really sad. Maybe, yeah. They've got a few tear jerkers. <laughs> it's crazy because I was, he showed me that right after I got into music. Okay. So I was barely, I was still in my periphery gent phase. Yeah. Like super tech stuff. And he's like, hey, listen to this. And it, I think that was a changing, one of the, one of like a changing points for me where I realized that I didn't need to play a lot to make you feel something and I wanted mm. my focus changed from impressing you with how well I could play the instrument yeah. to making you feel emotions without me being the forefront. Yeah. Um, and that, that mindset is carried through every other project I've been doing. Yeah. That's, that's good as, as well because I, that's something I think is a good lesson to learn. I used to write, like you said, stuff where I was trying to um, show off like my, I guess, um, prowess on on the uh technical side of the instrument but unless you play the instrument you probably don't really care exactly and even people that play it they don't care there's heaps of music that's good that's like that but i found that when you learn to trim off all the fat and then make something that's um more stripped down but more direct i actually think that's harder 
mm-hmm. than writing something technical. It was way harder in my opinion because people like give, say, pop a lot of shit. If you're in the metal world, people give pop shit. But it's like write a pop song. It's yep. very, very hard to write a good pop song, I, I imagine anyway. I, I couldn't write one. I think as a metal musician moving into rap. Yeah. Because – I would call rap pop. Like the new age of pop is just mainstream rap, like Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber's rap now and Post yeah. Malone. Diving into that industry and breaking it all down, the instrumentals are pretty simple. Like half the time, um, how it works is a producer would get a loop from mm-hmm. another producer, which is like complete melody samples and then I'd build the beat around it, like your 808, which is your bass, and then your, your electronic drums and stuff. Vocal delivery is such a crazy thing in that genre, which I've I want to pull over more into metal. Mm. There's so much underlying information. They speak in riddles and they state they make you read between the lines to actually understand your message. Yeah, and I feel like metal is very open. It gives you everything. Yeah, it's more direct, isn't it? In that way, yeah. Like, yeah. um, you know, people be like talking about Yeet and like Playboy Cardi as like brain dead rappers, but like. No. Like all these new rap, like you know, like the SoundCloud wave where they're just mumbling and auto tune, mm-hmm. like and everyone, like all the metalheads, like a lot of them hated on it. I find that shit so interesting because when you break it down, all these people that were making these like weird type of music, it's like there's so much intention behind it. Um, mm-hmm. You break down their lyrical concepts, and it's just the same shit that we sing about, just in a different way of writing it. Yeah. Um, and it almost looks like they just don't try too hard and, and they look cool doing it. And I, I love that aesthetic and I love the way that sounded. Mm. Um, so I, I wanted to pull the metal um, excellence of being good at your instrument. Yeah. And then I wanted to be, pull the steez from SoundCloud rap, like yeah. Lil Peep and, and Ghost Main, where they're not just, you know, one person. They're, they're a whole character. You you The whole brand is them. Yeah. Um, and like you were saying earlier, it's like now – your image and all that have to fall into place. That's correct, yeah. Um, But I also understand why that's become the case because when you think about it, like, you know, Freddie Mercury and all that, they look way larger than life. Yeah. And people Mm. like to look up to people, you know, when you inspire them. Yeah. Um, And that's also why I'm very firm in keeping my moral grounds very clear because I I know that I have people who look up to me Mm. and – I also understand, and I, I know we both understand that, like, even if you look up to someone, they're still human. Yeah. Um, but that's where I've, like, really, like, been focusing on where it's, like, combining all these different influences yeah. and making something different. Yeah, it's cool, man. I'm definitely interested to see what you do, you know, music-wise in the future. I've only recently discovered you myself because, um, like I said, I live under a bit of a rock and, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've not, I haven't been part of the say Perth scene. Not that I think I'm part yeah. of it, but you know, I've I only started playing gigs, um, 2019, I think. So, mm-hmm. um, and meeting other bands then. So you know, I, yeah. No, I get it. Um, a lot of people don't know about me, and, and that's great because I don't really. I was I was thinking like I was talking to a bunch of my friends like. As a, as, a, as a musician, you always want to be bigger and you want more people mm. listening to you. But at some point it's like, it'd be nice just to not have to worry about any of this and like your release cycles and success and yeah. writing, balancing between writing for myself and writing for the radio. Yeah. Um, a lot of my, I've seen a lot of my friends um, go down that path and they just finish completely like broken. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm just personally like, unsure about that so I'm, I'm just taking some time figuring it out do you just do you more just want to just do it organically how it feels to make it and it yeah. comes out when it comes out and and uh and, and all that kind of thing i think that's an idea i'd be interested in trying yeah. um i just i like to also like mass write i like pre-write a few releases back to back um and then you know because when you record live drums or when you're recording in a studio, you got to pay a bit more. Yeah. Um, so if we're actually recording live drums, I'll, I'll like speed run a few releases together. If I'm recording like just guitar DIs, I'll do it from my own setup. Yeah. It's just like trial and error. Do you find later when you listen back, if you say don't release it for a while, then you listen back, your tastes have changed so much that you just don't end up releasing it? Yep. Do you have a lot of unreleased stuff? 
you understand it. <laughs> yeah. I I will be I'll like I, I don't I don't I have so many songs I don't release. Yeah. And everyone's like, why don't you release this one? I like this one. It's like because it's old. I'm not yeah. the same person anymore. I've grown. Oh yeah, you know that happened to me within a, such a short time because we um started writing some music um late last year. Mm-hmm. Are we changed dramatically we were more playing like groove stuff kind of i guess influenced by say like machine or, or pantera that groove kind of mm-hmm. riffing um with a bit more modern um and i was really all about that and then i started just mucking around with synth stuff and i still don't really know much about it but i was just mm-hmm. like it was everything started getting deeper and then i started trimming the songs up a bit and taking all the crap out of it you don't need and and all the show offy shit don't worry about that let's just worry about making good impactful stuff and then mm-hmm. and then we have a song and the guy and we didn't release it and the guy's like oh when are we gonna release it i'm like i just don't think we will it's not congruent with where we're going because i write everything really in the band um most like drums uh i just don't write the bass our bassist i really love his bass playing and i let him just do everything because he's just fucking awesome in my opinion um and he always makes the song better with his bass playing, so I don't, I don't want to influence it yep. um, because I think bass playing is another art form and when you hear really good bass, it's really good, you know, and it's I think it's um, as much as people give bass as shit, I think to be a good bassist is a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. And if you can play yeah. guitar proficiently and play leads and solos and fucking all that technical shit, they think, oh, I could play bass. It's like, no, 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 you can't play bass it, like – if you're thinking like that, that closed minded, you definitely probably can't play bass. Bassists are always heard and not, uh, they're always felt and not heard. Yeah. And I feel like the best bassists are just people that can like stay in the pocket and then yeah. little embellishments. That's what, that's what he does. He doesn't overplay anything, but he also doesn't always follow the root note, but he, it's just, he always just every, he'll throw a note in like, you know, there's like a, a ring out and then he was throw a note or two in there, a really high one. And it's just like, man, it's perfect. When I hear it, I'm like, I get chills. I'm like, it's like, I wouldn't have thought to put that there, but it's, it belongs there. And and now that I've mm-hmm. heard that there, that's what needs to be there. And it's so amazing that you just thought that that needs to be there. And I fucking, I love it. When I get the chills and I'm like, man, I fucking love that. That makes me emotional, you know, that bit. That's really cool. And, and it's so good that he's, that he, um, that he just thinks like that. Because him and I, he comes around sometimes occasionally. We try to work on stuff and, I don't work well with other musicians at all. I yep. have to kind of work with by myself, yep. write all the stuff by myself um, because I just don't jam with people unless we're, obviously we're rehearsing. But, you know, some people, if they hear you play guitar, they're like, oh, come around and jam. It's like I don't jam I don't because jam. you won't get me and I don't get you and I do my own thing and I prefer to sit down and, like, write it and write the riff bit by bit and then I'm like – and then I'll tweak it and I'll listen to it in my car mm-hmm. and then it work a thousand times and then – I'll make mental notes into my phone and then come home and tweak a little bit of it. And I'm so meticulous about it um, that I just don't work well with people because if – does that make sense? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm 100% the same. I Yeah. The only time I jam with people is um, in a different genre. Yeah. Um, and like, like you were saying, it's some people are just so gifted at their craft. Like yeah. they would play the least amount of shit and they would put something in and you would hear it and it would change how – you perceive your own music that you've written. Yeah. That's um my drummer for me in Pinsa, Jack Nelson. Um, so I wrote all the drums in Pinsa at the start. And then um, I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to writing because there's so much things I want to do. And I've yeah. been intentionally working away from that. I want to get my band more into it. Yeah. Um, so when we did the first release, I took off all the drums and I sent it to Jack and I was like, hey, Go like fucking crazy. I, I don't care how much you overplay. I want I want to showcase you as a as mm. a drummer. Um and that man sent me back fucking gold. Yeah. It's it's like crazy. The shitty can this shitty wrote and drum MIDI was like nuts. And I was looking through the drum MIDI trying to figure out how he did it. And then two weeks later we tracked live drums and he played everything. Mm. Oh man, was like, <laughs> <laughs> You're just not human. Yeah, yeah. That's well, with, with our drummer, because I write all the MIDI drums, and I, I think he would play it and then he'll come down here and he doesn't know how to program drums. Mm-hmm. And because we're just on a budget, we don't record live drums, yep. admittedly. We just um, – I'll just try to humanise it, you know, change the velocities up and mm-hmm. 
throw in little things and little embellishments and stuff and um, try not to make it too straightforward. Um, yep. But I am keep trying to talk him into getting – I'll say, I'll say, I'll give you my easy drummer key and you can – and I'll send you riffs. Can you write drums to it? Oh, he's, he's shying away from it but I really kind of want his input because I'm – I get what you're saying. I'm a control freak as well with writing because I because I get worried that someone's not going to see my vision of how it should be and it's going to change and I'm not going to like it and then I don't want to be in the band or something stupid like that. But yeah. I know that's a selfish thing to do. But um, it's so hard to stop sometimes when you have so much faith in your writing. Yeah, and the, and the thing is, there's all like our, our vocalist has a good saying. He says in bands, there's there's drivers and passengers, and you can't have multiple drivers because it's going to steer that way. So someone's going to be the driver and everyone else has to be the passengers. And you can be a bit of a backseat driver and, you know, some people and obviously suggest things. I'm not like a Nazi about it, but, yep. um, but yeah, I definitely want to, would love to have his input because I love his drumming and it would be cool to just take all the drums off like you said and go and and also don't send him anything with the drums so he's not influenced. Yeah, that's and so then, important. Yeah, and then just go, there's my riffs. What do you want to do with that? And I'd just love to really hear his input because I really do enjoy his drumming, and um, and one day I want to talk him into programming it or something. Or oh, he's got an electric kit, maybe if you can hook that up or something. But I'd love to get him to do it. But he's he's a bit shy guy, and you know he gets anxious, and I think he's I worried about being judged. I don't know. I haven't, he hasn't said that, but that's just my assumption. But I think with drum programming, like if you got a smaller kit too, it's just it's one. Th a lot of it is just like, you know, getting to do it. Once you yeah. do it, it makes more sense. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I understand. I avoided doing video for the longest time because all the camera shit doesn't make sense. It doesn't cross over sometimes because, you you know, you use one program to edit a photo and use another program to edit a video. Mm. And I didn't know the video program. So I avoided it for like three years. Yeah. Um, and then there was a point in time where I was like, fuck this. I don't want to pay two grand for a music video. I'm going to figure this out. Mm. Um. And the hardest part was actually just doing it, mm. starting. But once you start it, it, you fall into the flow, especially if like, like theoretically your life isn't going crazy at that one point, if you got mm. extra time, I had, I had that extra time. So I just sat down and I figured it out um, yeah. and I'm still learning, but that's half the fun. So that pincer video, um, is mm -hmm. it, um, I don't know, the song, uh, yeah. one where the camera's static it's like you're in using like a rehearsal space or something yep. and jackson's kind of right up in the camera like kind of like yelling at the as if the camera's a person is it was, that, your, skin. was, um, that, was that yours no idea so that was actually a okay so pincer music videos all three were done in the same back-to-back -back two days by mm. oliver clark who plays in Elision or Illusion, E L I S I O N, the very cool tech based band. Yeah. Um, and Ollie reached out to me just to show me some videos he did because um, he liked my music in the past. And I showed, I watched his videos and I was like, these are these are crazy. Like, I, you're just as good as like the best, like Colin Jeffs and like mm. Third Eye Visuals and stuff. Like, Colin's a fucking genius videographer too. I love him. Um, but I saw, I met Ollie and I was like, this is exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. um, and for a bit, I considered doing the pincer videos myself. And then I realized that being in front of the camera and behind the camera would just be too much of a drag. Yeah, okay. Especially because I've already, I've written, I've did, I did a lot of the lyrics um, on this release and I've recorded all the guitars and all the bass and I had to organize everything. Mm. Um, because... This all happened about two or three years ago. And that was when I was like really like locking in. So I, I didn't really release control to the band. Yeah. Um, that's a mistake I realized I made. So I'm, I'm doing that and I'm like getting yeah. them more into the process. I just wanted to get that release done. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I realized that I was like, nah, I'm gonna get Ollie. So I spoke to the band. We've all agreed. We were like, let's get Ollie. He flew in um, and then we did two videos and then we had to figure out how to do a third video quick because i didn't want ollie to edit three videos for the price of like nothing yeah and i, I didn't feel like it was fair for mm. me to ask him to do a third video without telling him so I, we just set off a camera in the paint booth in the warehouse and we did like a one take shot and then jack fontes i think it was jack fontes who's the other half in ollie's media business mm. they did um like crt analog effects so essentially they run a video through 
like a, like a pedal. Mm. It's a, it looks like a guitar pedal, and you fuck around with it, and it goes into a CRT monitor, like an old TV monitor. Yeah, okay. And then they use a camera to film that monitor, I think. Yeah, right. And that texture you get from it is so analog, it's so real that you can't really recreate it. Okay. Um, but, it's interesting. Yeah, it, it was a cool thing that I've always loved, and he by chance had one. It's these like it's this like niche and I'll, it's it's cool. It's it's literally like handmade pedals. Mm. They just turn knobs and shit, and the whole screen would warp with the info that it does. That's cool. Yeah, so I, I was like, ah, oh, let's see if we can do something like that. You know, a two yeah. take video max, like one take video, just simple, mm. and then see what you can create. And maybe in the future, it'd be cool to do like packages for like your other clients like hey you can do like one video and then like another quick video on top for like half the price that's cool yeah that's that's a good idea because um i noticed um bands in perth like say dark matter and that that i'm not not really familiar with and you don't really see them in the you know set well not that i know the guys but i've never seen anyone point them out at other gigs really or whatever you know Mm -hmm. they're kind of the people i know not many people know them and that they're pretty quiet guys and then you look at their stuff and they use heaps of different people that i've never really heard of like you know a lot of bands in perth say use joe varley or for videos yep um but then you see these other bands that have some really creative and different stuff they're using other guys that i haven't heard of and i'm and i always wondered how do these people find these people and because it'd be cool to um do something with some of these guys once sometime as well just something something different you know social media um (coughs) when you when you think about it we're just from this angle we're metal heads in metal bands looking at a metal release the way a metal artist would do mm. dark matter decided to look into a different area they looked into fashion and they looked yeah. into rap and all that and then in each scene there are kingpins like james killian is a big one in perth where he's just one of my favorite photographers mm-hmm. and he's he's like my go-to for shows um but then there's always a James in every industry. Yeah. Um, like in in the car scene, there's this photographer called Luke Hemsley. He drives a Miata. It's so cool. But his f- photography is something that speaks to me differently. I'd look mm. at his photos and they'd just be different. And I'd love to work with him one day. Yeah. Just to have that crossover. And, and I know that Dark Matter are doing that. And that's when it comes down to how you move through social media yeah. and how well you can figure out how well you can read a book by like looking at an account and figuring out who does what. Yeah. Um, so with Pinsir, the next, the next few videos, instead of flying Ollie over just to make Ollie film everything, we're going to do a collab where we split the workflow between Lucky Stars and Ollie. Because Lucky Stars and none of them are really metalheads. All the influences are from like rap and yeah. like old school Japanese drift footage. Yeah, and I feel like that with a metal band would be interesting. And that's that's a that's a good point because that's what I was looking for. Without, sorry, you could you could take that if you want. No, nah. no, nah. I will just cut around it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I've been thinking the same thing because um. Um, because um, nothing against any other bands in Perth, but I feel like for our next stuff, I want to stand out a bit and not mm-hmm. use the same people everyone uses or something like that. And um, just something different, something out a lot left field, something that's, I don't know, just, you know. Different. I'm just, yeah. I'm just bored of where we're at, if that makes sense. It's like I need something else. And then to stand out, we need to do something else, um, you know, like, and it's like, I don't know what, because I don't know heaps of different people that do things. Um, like, you know, it seems like you're pretty well connected. You know, a lot of guys doing heaps of different things. And, but I'm like, we need, for an extra release, we need to do something else. I don't know what it is, but it can't just be like, um, here, oh, we're dropping a song like we've done before. And then we've got a video done by, by, you know, such and such mm-hmm. and, and just the same way we've always done it. Um, just want to do something different, you know. And then I saw um, even Conform. Their, their marketing is awesome. Conform have always been crazy with the way they move online. Yeah, and I was just like, and I'm like, yeah, I want to wish um, 
I was hooked up with some of, some of the people these guys are hooked up with because they just think differently and, and do things differently and it's not the same, the same, same, same that everyone's doing. You know what I mean? It's, I think it's actually less about connections when it comes to what Conform are doing and more about just... Think outside the box. Yeah. yeah. Jeremy Pickett has this very specific sound um, that Conform is because Jeremy writes a lot of this stuff. Like okay. he's the guitarist. Yeah, I don't know any of the guys. Really tall guy. Okay. Um, he, he's got a very specific sound and you either like it or don't. Yeah. And that's great because then that gives your fan base a very clear defining point. Mm. And in that band, Troy is a good vocalist. Troy's, Troy's nuts. And mm -hmm. the stage presence goes cool too. It's, it's like a, it's, it's intentional while at the same time also just picking your members, making sure that they're interesting enough and also just figuring out how you want to, make the music and so yeah. instead of committing completely to like metal conform have like like dnb and like rap yeah. influence it's cool i like that and yeah. it's just thinking outside the box yeah so it's and that's i'm actually started kind of steering more towards that um just not just straight up metal but mm -hmm. you know just branch out a bit um look going back to soundcloud I don't, you probably heard of this rapper that was on there have you heard of that guy Bones? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's crazy. He's got on um, that side project, Surrender Dorothy too. Oh, okay. well, I don't know much about him, but okay. I just remember um, someone years ago, this photographer that I know was posting his stuff on his Instagram um, and then I checked it out on SoundCloud and I can't remember the name of his songs because this is going back a couple of years now, but it's just fucking so, it's so emotional, some of his stuff. It's so fucking cool. And I was like, man, I'd love to kind of incorporate that into our band. I don't know how, but it would uh, be really cool too. So pro tip with any sound like that, you type in bones, type yep. drum kit, Reddit, and there'll be like a Reddit link okay. with like drum kits bass that sound like that. Okay, yeah. Um, and the difference between rap and metal as far as Picasso samples go is rap. We don't need to have round robin samples. We can have one shots. Mm -hmm. So your hi hats would be the same sample the whole way through. You don't need. I don't humanize anything. Yeah. Um, and a good way to like try to start just mixing around is listen to like a track you like, and then like you know break it down. You figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then figure out how the energy of your music has room for that. There's always yeah. a way to move stuff around. Like I've been working trap stuff into metal for a bit just because like, I'm bored and I want to try yeah, it. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, and it's it's fun because it also changes the way you write and understand when mm. you start really delving into a different genre. All the all the key points in that are so different from your other genre. Like metal emphasizes the breakdown and the build up to the breakdown. Yeah, and that's not even a thing in rap. Mm. Um and moving in between both i like sometimes i'd like have a rap song and in the end i'd do like a little line and then the whole thing pitches down by like three semitones and slows down yeah and it it's my version of a down tempo breakdown yeah yeah um and it's, i'm yeah. so bored of, of the traditional breakdowns so exactly bored of them. oh to be honest i never really got super into them um like i was i was to be honest i was never hugely into metalcore um but you know, the typical breakdowns of, um, you know, that all the big bands were doing at the time, probably a couple of years ago. Yep. Yeah. They're just so fucking overdone, I think, now. I and think, it's good yeah. that now I think people are still doing breakdowns, but there's, there's a lot way more creative shit now, you know, like um, like what you're saying, like you got to think outside the box because otherwise you're going to be recycling, you know, yep. um, the same stuff. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's good news. It sounds like you're incorporating other genres to 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 diff to make that breakdown stand out and hit different. And it's a uh, it's a pet peeve for me because you know if I if I showed like someone who grew up around like Wu Tang, mm. if I if I went back in time and I showed them Post Malone or Billie Eilish and said this is what rap has become like X and Ski Mask and all that and, and Juice, they they would be so confused. If I went back in ten, if I went back ten years and I showed someone who listened to Sworn and Pinsa, or like, it it would still have that connection because mm. it's still the same sound, just regurgitated differently. Yeah. Um, and I feel like metal traps you because it's it's such a specific sound. Yeah, it is. Um, that 
I I've intentionally tried to change it up. Yeah. Because like you said, it's the same thing over and over again. Mm. And that's why people say metal metal's like a scene that's ten years behind everything. It's only yeah. just starting to change. It is because I'm bored of metal, to be honest. Like I can't remember the last new thing I really listened to that I was excited about really, you know what I mean? Like um Yeah, it's um there's things that have excited me but but as I found like say like that bones go, when I discovered that I was like, Man, this is so fucking cool. Whereas it's been a long time since I've heard a metal band and gone, Man, this is so fucking cool. Yep. And I can't stop listening to it or something. I will give it a rotation and I'm going like, Yeah, next, you know. Exactly. I think Sleep Token is the one of the more recent bands which have done something different. Yeah, they're cool. I'm they're not cool. hugely into them, but they've um they've I can appreciate if that makes sense. And There's, yeah. Bad omens, they've got some cool stuff too. Bad Omens are a perfect example of a band learning how to move with the time. Yeah. I think they blew up on TikTok. Yeah, um, I, yeah. yeah I saw like an interview with their singer um, and he was saying something about TikTok. I, I didn't know what they were talking about, but mm. something like uh, they got popular off there or something. He didn't really elaborate on it, but... It's it's a good platform to start. Um, yeah. that That's like, yeah, like I said, perfect example of a band moving through with the times. Yeah. And that's on, that's I think that's why like they they demand such an attention in, in this current market. It's just because they understood the market and, and they learned the trends and they just made it work for them yeah. without changing what metal is to them. Because they sound like a metal band. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I find definitely. that impressive and I take I love respect. I that um, Concrete Jungle song of theirs. You know the one? Concrete. I actually don't even listen to Bad Omens. Oh, uh, okay. I've heard, I've heard yeah. them. I don't yeah. know what songs are what. Okay, I just... I love that song. Our, um, the guy that does our mixing and mastering um, is, is from um, Brisbane, Gareth Hargraves. Don't know if you're familiar with him. Familiar name. Yeah. Um, we just we just like what he does with our music and, and I send him demos sometimes and then I just like his input because he listens to different stuff to me and I say, can you just put your producer's hat on? What would you change about this song or what do you think? Because um, sometimes I don't really get – if I say put something in our group chat for our band – um, they're just stoked no matter what, usually, you know what I mean? They don't, and I'm like, I want you to really tell me what you don't like about it. what, how can I make this better? But they don't really do that. And that's fine. You know, um, they, a lot of them guys aren't really songwriters. So maybe they don't, you know, they just think it's cool yep. how it is. And to me, I'm like, it's not great. There's something, I don't know, it's, it's missing something. I don't know what it is. I can't figure it out. I need someone to fig- help me figure it out. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll send him stuff. And then um, we got this bit of a song in the outro. Um, just the drums, he sent me bad omens. I'd never heard of it. He said, listen to this song, go to this mark, that drum beat, put that there. And I put that there and it instantly just makes it hit way harder. I'm like, fuck, I would never have thought of that. Never have thought of that. I always have an extra person at the end of my writing process to oh. be an external input. Yeah. Because, yeah. like That's what I need. I need someone like that because I'm trying to change our sound and make it better. And I want to make it that next level, but um, I need someone to pitch it to. I need to find someone that that understands where it should go next or something. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's people out there, but yeah, it's about finding the right person. And that that's the whole thing. It's just finding the right person. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of songs can end up like lackluster without that final touch because mm. it's just a singular perspective. Yeah. Um, I use my producer too, actually. Um, I go through George Lever for a lot of my stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, and in that chain, before we get to George Lever, we go through Ethan for drums and maybe like instrument recording. Ethan did our vocal recording. Ethan McPherson from Daybreak in Perth. Yeah. Um, They're a cool band. Cool fucking really band. Really cool band, yeah. Ethan's such a good guy too. Um, so along the way people would be like hey try this try that this sounds cool or like maybe this sounds too much like this band Mm. or this sounds too much like that band um and that is so important for me because sometimes i just don't realize what i'm doing because it's such a singular focus when i'm yeah i'll get what you mean because sometimes you get you get stuck and then what happens with me is i get really depressed about it and then I can't sleep. It actually affects me that much that mm-hmm. if I get if I get like um, stuck with a song and I'm 
know something's wrong with it. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's it not. eats you up. Yeah, and I'm like, it's got potential. This song it really has potential to be really good, but I don't know what the fuck to do. And I'm like, I don't have anyone to send it to. And I'm like, fucking and I ask other people, but a lot of people that I do know were just like, they'll just give me props. I'm like, I don't want props. I want to know what's, yeah, like what's going to take it. What, should, what can I do with it? And, and I guess that's what you miss out when you're, the, this day and age, because you're writing at home, you're not in a studio with a producer like, say, you know, mm-hmm. Metallica, say, used Bob Bob Rock and he elevated them, you know, um, to to really um, trim their sound down and make it direct and, you know, with um, the Black Album or something, you know, it's probably not – well, that's probably a good example, I guess, like how successful they became off that. But, you know, it's it's a producer can have so much of an effect. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you don't get that if you're at home because you're not in the studio with a producer. Um, it's that's that's also why the internet. Um, yeah, I got lucky. Um, I've managed to build like a group of people I can rely on for yeah. like all this. Because, like you said, I can't be surrounded by yes men. Like if they're just like, oh no, nah, it's tough. It's cool. It's, yeah. I won't ever improve. That's right. Um, yeah. Uh, right now, Connor, who used to play in Lowe's gets, yeah, yeah, he gets all my demos, and I okay, get yeah. I get all of his, and and we just talk. He's got cool fashion sense. <laughs> He's got the little glasses. <laughs> yeah, and the in the earrings and the um that's the first thing I noticed about him. He makes a statement when he's seen. Yeah. But that's also what I was saying. On stage he's this monster. Mm. But as I got to know him over the last few months, there's a lot of heart in that man. Yeah. I've I've enjoyed getting to know him better. Mm. Um, and I've enjoyed hearing all the things that he's like poking at and all the things that I'm poking at gets influenced by him. Yeah. And that's now cool. when I look back at my music, even like my rap stuff, cause all my rap stuff and all my metal stuff gets developed around my crew um, yeah. and they all give me advice and they all listen to stuff. All the rappers in my label, which is, um, it's called mansion. We're mm-hmm. about to start moving that one. All the rappers in it, just make rap um but they would listen to my metal songs and be like hey you should try this instead mm, and that's cool it's cool because at the end of the day then now when i go through my google drive and yeah google drive over dropbox and yeah over dropbox but I'll, I'll be scrolling through and i'll find a song that i'm working on and then all my friends have been on it they've been around it it's like in a way for me i'm surrounded by my friends because mm. my music means that it, it documents everything i do with them yeah and i I find that so like it's so like reassuring for me sometimes yeah that's that's what i wish i had because um because i don't really hang out with many musicians obviously i'm pretty isolated down in mandra there's musos here but i don't really hang out with many but um the only musicians i really hang out with is my bandmates um but everyone else i i spend time with is, is my work colleagues and i work in like oil and gas and construction so yeah a lot of them guys, they're not into music, as okay. like I am. And if I sent them something, they're either going to hate it because it's metal or they're just, yeah, not going to give me the feedback I need. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, I'm, I wonder if it's like, there's probably, I'm sure there's Reddit groups, hey, that actually you can, you can um, submit things to that people can go, can critique. Their Discord. Um, I don't even know what Discord is. I've heard it. I don't know what it is. I don't it's like, use it zoom but just in public messenger groups okay um it's good for gaming because it integrates with a lot of games i've only had to figure out how to use it like a month or two ago okay because lucky stars the car group decided to get a discord so we can have like interaction with friends and fans and Mm -hmm. stuff um and i posted it on my story and it was it's not a mistake but that was my like that was a mistake because all the metal people came in Mm. um and it's turned into this like group where there's a group chat, there's a chat in it called creatives and people mm. would throw songs in it. Everyone would feedback it. That's cool. um, and it's all in this car discord, but like mm. there's this like little micro community where like you can always get help. Um, and if you, if you need somewhere to try it, I can always give you an invite to that one. Yeah. That'd be cool, man. I'd appreciate that. We'll, we'll chat about it later. And, of course. Um, yeah. Um, because yeah, yeah, I definitely need to find the right group. But I also don't want to uh, be an imposter to a group, if you know what I mean, because... No, 
like the group's kind of been closed off. I've literally like, it was a car discord and mm. I was like, fuck it. Like, I don't need to have a discord for the car group. This is like, everyone here are now friends. Like we all mm. speak to each other and work with each other. Um, invites open. Yeah. I, I just like, I just use that as yeah. like my, like my, like my, like, back up before like i release something just to make sure it works that's cool man yeah i appreciate that we'll we'll chat with you about it later and yeah of course yeah, just really internet. do appreciate that internet um, go crazy hey internet goes crazy <laughs> half of these guys ain't even in australia and that's that's the gorgeous part that's probably the, a good thing you're getting different people with different influences different cultures and um yeah that's that's good um one one other thing i did want to ask you as well um so so I'm just going to rewind a bit, going back mm -hmm. to when you picked up guitar, started playing guitar and all that. How did you get into writing music and then was Dearly your first band? No. Like, so my first band was this band called Within Eden. Mm -hmm. um, that was my first band I released with. Yeah. Um, Within Eden was produced by Jeremy from Conform. Yep. Um, and I got into writing that because I wanted to – do something more than covers songs. Mm -hmm. So I was learning how to play songs through Guitar Pro, uh, Ultimate Guitar. Yeah. I'll just Google like Blackville Brides tabs or yep. like Pierce the Veil tabs. And then I found out that you can download a GP5 file, like, you know, like. Yeah. Um, and then I downloaded the files and I learned the songs because then it would play it to me and I could see what they were doing with the tabs. Mm. And then I was like, oh. I moved the note by accident and I was like, I've got to undo that. And then my brain was like, I moved the note, made a different note. I don't even need to record. I could just write a song in Guitar Pro. Yeah. So I wrote a song in Love Guitar Pro. Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> legit. I was just doing that, but I was ripping off Make Them Suffer because Make Them Suffer was the first band that I really got into. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I was ripping off Make Them Suffer in North Lane. I did that for like a few months and then I was like, okay, this is cool, but this is boring. So I got, um, I, I torrented Superior Drummer mm -hmm. and I torrented TSC X50, the 5150 amp sim by yeah. TSC. And I bought um, Buster's bass, uh, Buster Odohom. Mm -hmm. He had like this bass for sale like six or seven years ago. So I bought that. Um, and up till now, I still use program bass because I don't need to record real bass until the end. Yeah. And it makes it quicker. But So you just use a few demos. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I did for the start and writing was a process writing is always a process and i don't think i've learned how to write properly yet and mm. I, I love the way i write because it's different yeah but i'm surrounded by so many creators that every time i write i'm doing it differently um because i just learn from them um yeah one of my friends xander who's this crazy artist in perth he sounds like a mix of like juice world and kid Leroy, very like mainstream sounding but just nuanced mm -hmm. um he was showing me how he recorded where he has the mic and autotune is live and there's nothing else in the folder the song himself is like an mp3 mm -hmm. and that means you can have autotune with no latency so you're hearing yourself at the purest version of it because we all have like slow computers yeah um and i was doing that with uh, a shoegaze project which i was like messing around with and I was like recording my vocals and, and it changed the way I wrote. And then I recorded a rap song in that same style where I was mm -hmm. using my voice like an instrument. And that was a different product. That's and cool. Yeah, it's cool. I, I love it. And, and that's that's really where I enjoy it. I, I enjoy music for how many different ways there is to write it. Yeah. And it's the same for art and stuff. Like I would, I would work with a graphic designer. I was working with Tyler... Um, who runs Chukuhara and Jargon in Perth. It's a clothing brand. Mm. And he was showing me how he made his designs because we were working on a piece together. And I was watching the way he worked and it was so different. And it was so alien, but he got the same result as me. And it's it's it changes my perception every yeah. time I see someone new work. If I watched you work, I would learn something different. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you probably would, but I would. probably uh, not good things. <laughs> what do you mean? We're equals. You're a creative, I'm a creative. Like... Mm. The only thing different between us is like maybe our stream count or like how long we've been doing this for. Yeah. Because I assume you've probably been doing it for a while. Yeah. Yes, but admittedly for a very, very, very long time, I was um, stuck in my ways of just doing things one way for ages. Only, only very, very recently 
or branched out a bit more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm the same. I was stuck in my ways until like a year and a half ago and my friends started showing me. Yeah. I found, I found a group that I love and now between my rap label and my like pincer and the label pincer signed to grayscale and lucky stars all the groups cross over mm. and i have this like huge support group now yeah, and that's that's, cool, that's really when i started learning how to be different be better yeah and in the process of me learning how to release control over my music to my friends and learning how they wrote and experimenting with how different everything could be I've applied it to also my lifestyle where I live my life the way my friends live every now and then I'll change it up. Yeah. I'll do different things and it, it shows me a lot more of the world and I, I enjoy that. Yeah, I think um, it's the, the people you surround yourself with can, especially like someone like say you or I that's pretty creative, I think that without sounding like um, putting this the wrong way but sometimes <laughs> you can be let down by the people you surround yourself with or you you will never be the be best version of yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas if you surround yourself with the right people, you could, someone like yourself that's got a lot of potential, really creative, and all you need is that one key to unlock and you can just go to the next level with things. And mm -hmm. and um, and some people can enable that so much easier than, than if you're isolated and don't, you know, hang out with the right people. Yeah. You cannot, it's almost sucks because I feel like... um without sounding arrogant or anything, but I feel like um, if I had surrounded myself with with um, with people that would um, understand me, I, I could, uh, I could, you know, write better music or, yep. or I could, I reckon I have potential, but, I, and I don't think I've even realised a small amount of it, but it's almost like I don't know where to begin with it. And if I had these people that could help me with that, I think that I could definitely you know do better things i think that also comes with time and networking yeah but absolutely yeah there's also a difference between like an industry connection and an actual connection yeah um like with grayscale and pincer it started as an industry connection i messaged them like hey i have a new band would you like to sign it um and they were like yeah we spoke for a while we went through like the debate mm -hmm. stage and, and all the label stuff but over the course of a year of working with them in such a close relation, um, Redbeard has become one of my like closer friends. I yeah, is that the guy that runs it? Yeah, Redbeard it? is one of the owners. The other one's Ash. Yeah, um, Ash is fucking cool. I love Ash, um, but I haven't met him in person yet, which is mm. crazy. I met Redbeard in person recently at the Make Them Suffer show a few okay, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah like an industry connection became like someone who i look up to he's like mm. a few years he's a good few years older than me um it's almost like a big brother relationship with in yeah. my eyes like he would give me actual advice about life that's cool um i got lucky when i got that connect because like yeah that man's a genius yeah and that's good man that's um that's the, it's a rare, it's a rare thing to have but um it's definitely um it's it's yeah it's just so important to have that i eh? it's um and like treasure that as well grayscale are the best label i've been on like i say it every time and i always keep <laughs> saying it like they're such they're just such good people i'm happy to trust them are they for, where what state are they from i think melbourne oh, okay yeah. um yeah they they're like an ethically correct label which is such a rare thing to find in metal. Mm. Um, yeah, it's one of them ones. Just yeah, right. good people are making cool shit. Yeah, well, and I don't know much about labels but at all. <laughs> my first experience was not good. Okay. Um, there was a lot of, like, legal bullshit and a lot of threats. Oh, wow. Um, but it's okay. I've, I have realised that you have to learn. Yeah. I have friends who are in, like, bigger bands who you probably would know of, and they're having, like, shit label deals Mm. um and it's like i've realized that all these bigger bands like some of them are just trapped mm. even though they're huge they're trapped and it's like that's the last thing i want no, like fuck no. being big and trapped like fuck being small and trapped even more and i that's i do not want that yeah you, you see what happens with some bands when they're trapped and they have like an obligation mm -hmm. to release a certain amount of music 
and then they release something and it's panned by critics or fans, but it's like they just did it just to get off the label or something like that. And it sucks that they have to do that because then mm -hmm. the fans won't understand that. They'll be like, oh, this fucking shit, fuck this band. And it's like, yeah, but it's more nuanced than you think or there's... Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much yeah. politics going on. Yeah. Um, and that's even... Um, but people, there's there's a big disconnect between fans and bands. Like I remember um, um, when um, the guitarist and drummer left Machine Head, Phil Demel and Dave McLean left Machine Head, I think it was around 2018, and just everyone was bagging out Rob Flynn um, on social media and all that mm -hmm. and this and that, saying, oh, he must be a fuckhead and all this. It's like, yeah, but you don't realise that th you're putting these guys on this pedestal. These guys, it's just a job. Yeah. Like that you might go be a carpenter or you might be a mechanic. These guys are just play a musical instrument for a living. It's the same as what you do, just in a different context. Different context. And it's like if you're um in a in a band, you spend in a band you're gonna spend more time, like a touring band like that, you're gonna spend more time with them than you would at a typical job anyway, because you're gonna be on the road. And and um it's just people don't it's weird how people don't get that, that it's like they're just they're just they're just people. They're just humans. Like they're just other people that just happen to do that for a job, and um, and you see these people just get so riled up online and like all these all this shit they say about like say you know Rob Flynn. They're like, oh, he's a fucker, yeah, dude. He must be a cunt to be in a band with, or this or that, and and um and look how he's just fucked them over. It's like yeah, but you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Maybe they were bickering for years, and maybe the other guys weren't pulling their weight. Who? And they're not going to make that your business because that ain't your business. Exactly. If I quit my job, that's not your fucking business. Why I quit my job, or if I got fired, it's none of your business. So why should that be your business? You know what happened there, and it's just weird how people take bands so personal. I think on the flip of that, looking at it from a fan's perspective, mm. there is a band which you like and you listen to it every now and then, whenever you think about them, and that's all they are. They are that piece of music in yeah. your head um so it's easy to get that mixed up where it's like they're not just people they're also your daily soundtrack mm. they're, they're larger than life they look like they this is unproblematic they make the music and then they go home and that's their life yeah people forget that there is a whole person attached to the thing behind the guitar yeah and there's like five of them in a band yeah and they go on tour and they are in each other's proximity for so long that over time you either end up loving or hating each other more yeah um i i get to see a lot of bands come through on tour and i'll go you know see them at shows hang out with them and then i'll, I'll talk to them about their band dynamic and sometimes like some bands of five would come and have like two of them tight and two of them tight and some like dude that's yeah. just a loner and these are huge bands that like i've listened to growing up and it's like people forget that there's just humans and we're all just like yeah doing whatever it takes to get somewhere um where being a musician it's like a job with less security and more hassle and yeah less connection to your family once you're on the road all the time yeah that tensions will rise on the road and if you're always in that state like it, it just happens yeah and, and yeah that's there's a there's a disconnect in that sense because most fans never get to tour and most that's right yeah and i suppose it is it's pretty um it's quite a private kind of industry as well isn't it you know there's no one actually knows what happens on tour yeah, that's right yeah like um i was hanging out with fit for an autopsy um and they were here when they make them suffer mm. like a few weeks ago and we were at a dumpling place and joe comes out the hotel and he's like he's the vocalist like this big dude such a friendly guy and he looks so like stressed and i'm like what's up and he's like my flight got cancelled we had to rebook we had to do this um and it's and then i've also been to shows where the band's late because like their flight over got cancelled and they're gonna be late like when mm. I, we played with justice they had a flight just get cancelled and for no reason so they mm. came like an hour before doors open with uh kublai so we had to headline the two headliner bands had to sound check right before doors um and like obviously that's not what you want but at the same time it's it's definitely not either of their fault because they couldn't control no. that yeah but then the fans would come in and then they would, they would see them play a set 
and then they would mob him trying to talk to them. Mm. And they have no context of what just happened before, whether everyone's stressed out, everyone's just trying to survive. And yeah. that's the disconnect that we've always seen. But yeah. And, and the, that's that's pretty much the reason for why that happens, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. no, no one wants to get on stage and be like, oh, I fucking missed our flight. I'm tired. I don't want to do this. And, and tell the <laughs> yeah. crowd that. No one's going to do that. <coughs> no, no. So it's like, what's up, Perth? How are we going? It's good to see you guys. Yeah. You guys key? And everyone's like, yeah. yeah. And then there's this like thing that they've already put out in front where everyone now assumes all is good, all is well. Mm. Why don't they want to meet the fans after? Why Why don't they want to take I photos with me? Personally, like you see it, um, you'll see like something comes up on say Facebook or Reddit, mm-hmm. you know, you scroll through and it'll be like, oh, who's the famous person you met that was an asshole? And then people will say what it was. And some of it, it's like, well, you were kind of like pestering. If someone did that to you after you just finished work, and came up, we got right in your face, and just and and you know, you just be like, "Fuck off!" Exactly. I, and but then this person says that, and they're not even telling you to fuck off, but they might have been dismissive, and you're so heard about that you've gone and made a post online about it, and it's mm-hmm. like, but it's just another. It's just they're just doing their job. And if someone, if you finish work and someone came and hassled you and go, "Oh, can I get a photo? Oh, can, oh man, I love you so much. Oh, thank you." You just feel like, man, just. Like, Stop. talk I'm, to I'm me hungry. as a person. I'm, yeah, I'm hungry and I'm, 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 maybe I want to go do something. I want to go relax, man. I'm tired. I, I've been flying and, and, you know, all the mm-hmm. – and um, it's just some, some people just – yeah, it's, it's crazy. They just don't get it. But it's – I understand that they don't mm-hmm. get it either. Maybe they just don't have that concept of, of it. I feel like also our genre attach, attracts people who are not very socially – normal that's right yeah and some I, people might have anxieties and and and, and yeah and yeah and maybe like, they're just they're not being like um i've, I've been had some people say that uh, that they think i'm really arrogant but i'm not i just get social anxiety you just don't know and, what to say i do the same yeah like, and i get yeah. always small talk i'm not good at small talk and it's like and so i just sometimes i just won't talk and it's not it doesn't mean i don't i don't, I don't like you i don't want to talk to you i just I'm like, oh, I don't want to say something stupid. I'm thinking, I don't want you to judge me because I don't want to say something stupid. I'm scared that I'm going to say something stupid and get cancelled after this interview, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. And yeah. then, but then they've gone, oh, yeah, he's a he's a real arrogant prick. And I was like, oh, well, I absolutely was not trying to be, and I, yeah, that's not my intention. I thought you were, you know, I just didn't want to say something and, and look like a dickhead or something. I was like, <laughs> just like I, I came to this podcast with like no idea what it was. I put on the podcast you had on spotify with you and jackson mm. it's funny hearing jackson talk because <laughs> i i've seen that man in a different context yeah. but it's like i just i was excited yeah I, i've enjoyed this and everything like you've been doing and everything you've told me and, and the life you've yeah. built here just seems like That's such fair. a nice life yeah i appreciate that and i was i wanted to say to you as well um that actually um speaking to you you're, you're a very inspiring person you um as soon as i'm speaking to you it just makes me want to do better things and be better and you know what i mean it's I get it's, that. it's good being around people like that that you know um that it's just positive you know what i mean i keep getting that um comment that you've just gave me um from a lot of the guys in lucky stars um my business partner at riley mm-hmm. uh, riley james lennon um he's <laughs> got <laughs> such a goofy middle name <laughs> he's 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 that to me because yeah. he's not afraid to do something that might not turn out well. Mm. And I feel like there's this motto which has been drilled into my head where like you miss every shot you don't take. That's uh, absolutely. And I've, I've just realized that like if, if, if I live by that quote alone and I tell everyone that I meet to live by that quote, obviously without like with constraint, you know, I'm yeah. going to like take a shot at like, you know. Yeah, yeah, of but, course, yeah. But like. I try to embody that mindset, especially when I'm around creators, because yeah, like you said, a lot of creatives struggle with their circles and their friends mm. of other creatives. Like finding one other creative who lives near you is rough enough. Mm. I've been blessed where I'm surrounded by like literally like hundreds of creative in Perth. There's mm. so many people that are out there. There's there's a lot in this area. They're just waiting yeah. for you to be found. That's right, yeah. And I, then it's hard when when people like us they you don't want to reach out sometimes to people because of, you know, you might just be anxious or something. I need and to then, introduce you to this. And then when both people that. are anxious, it's like no one's going to talk to each other. Yeah. <laughs> I need to introduce you to someone. Um, one of my friends called Matt. Yeah. He's 
got a camper and he lives like 10 minutes from you. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, he's like really into like metal. I've been trying to get him in bands, but I think um, he's just like a little bit older than me. Yeah. But I know that like all these creatives and all these people who play guitar and metal, it's so isolating sometimes in, mm. in some like niche genre that most mainstream people don't even understand. Yeah. And then you go home and you write music and you put your heart into it and then you drop it and it gets a thousand streams and you're like, okay, it's it's disheartening and that's the last thing I want for my friends. So Yeah, and there's a lot of gatekeeper kind of stuff with metal as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um can as much as so many people in metal are so friendly and that's the it's the strange um underlying arrogance. Yeah, and so you know, people think that like metalheads a lot of them might be dicks or something, but a lot of them are such, such great people. And um, I believe every industry has dickheads and good yeah, people, though. Yeah, but I think because the aggressive nature, everyone thinks, oh, they're all angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I get it. I feel like I feel like my pet peeve for metals more people victim complexing their yeah. depression. That's like my pet peeve. Yeah, like people just idolizing mental illness and then complaining that they're not getting better. Yeah. That's really where I feel like metal's taking the wrong turn. Mm, Every yeah. other band's talking about suicide, mm. but not like I'm better, but like, if you don't love me, I will kill myself. And, yeah. and that's not a message I think we should be sending at all. No. And, no. and one in one in two bands would have that message. <coughs> yeah. I agree. That's what I wanted. That if I, if I could change anything, that's what I'd change. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree. All the, all the good bands don't do that because they understand that there's so much more to life than idolizing and putting this thing on a pedestal because the internet deemed it as an aesthetic thing. Yeah. It's good to get past that. Like, I think you're truly free when you don't care about the constraints of things. And, um, you know, if you want to stay within, like, the, the, the lanes of, like, of what people expect with metal, it's it's not liberating. You know what I mean. But when I you, agree. I feel like um, with our stuff, when now that I've gone, I don't want to, don't have to write stuff like Groove, like Machine Head or Pantera. I don't have to write stuff like that. I can just write whatever the fuck I want because I don't care. Because a, we don't have enough fans that it matters. Not, we're not going to alienate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I don't want to typecast our band. So I'm like, now I'm just going to do whatever, whatever I think is cool, and it's. I really enjoyed a lot, and then, you know, um, Sam, the guitarist, he he's, a, he's <laughs> loves putting like a, a time on things. Oh, next year by March, by March, I reckon we should have another release. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why March? Who gives a fuck? We're not on a label, or we don't have any obligations. Right? Release it when it's done. And yeah. maybe these songs that I'm writing now that we think are really cool, maybe in um, October I might listen to them and think, fuck that shit. I might write something better and scrap it all. Um, but that sucks because then, you know, then these other guys are waiting around and around forever. But I've always believed that if the band wasn't happy with how fast I was writing and they wanted me to be faster, they can go and write their own music. Yeah, yeah. I believe that everything I release needs to be of yeah. value and of worth. And yeah. I know you're the same. Yeah. If it takes you a bit longer than March. And who's to be like, no, you have yeah. to release. Like, even with Pinsa, dude, like, we have what, like, just under 10k monthly listeners maybe mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a lot for a local band but it's also mm -hmm. nothing in the grand scheme it doesn't matter i could i could just not release for another year and mm -hmm. then come back when my head's ready and, and that'd be fine um no, it's not like it's going to be a full-time income and, yeah and that and, this, and the other thing is as well is that what do you want to base your your um happiness off either you know what i mean because i know um Last year we released this song called Futility uh -huh. and it was a bit more, say, mainstream. It was kind of like in the vein of, say, Architects or something like that okay. for us. And and then I was hoping it was going to get a few listens and it got worse than like our song that's got even tremolo picking that's like 200 and something BPM, real fast, um, thrashy. That it did way worse than that and I was so bummed about it. But I'm like, I want to get past giving a fuck. I want to get past that even being a thing like oh, it gives a shit. I just want to write stuff that I like and <laughs> <laughs> the mental the mental reward, like the little serotonin button press from a yeah. song going good though, is it's crazy. It is, it is. But I wish I want to get past expectations. 
expectations is hard because you go into every release thinking you're better than what yeah. you did before. Yeah. Um, I feel like metal is one of the few genres where selling out doesn't actually work. Um, like going mainstream in metal's not 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 really a it's thing. not really many bands that it's worked for that I can think of that were say fairly extreme in their time and then released like a new metal album and they got bigger. And so it's not many bands that, that I really know that did that. There was bands that started out doing new metal that were big, say like Linkin Park and all that, and they were already doing that anyway. And then but you see other bands that say were writing pretty traditional metal then tried to chuck a bit of rap in and then some strange outfits and stuff like that and, and it just fucking blew up in their face. There's only three bands I can really think of that have sold out in not not selling out like re- reducing the quality of music but making something more... Like mainstream and accessible. Accessible yeah. but still being really fucking good. It would be Thornhill, Void of Vision and Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah. Thornhill have... I, I've known them when they like... I've known about them when they did the XY album like proper like aggressive metalcore mm-hmm. and then they put out in, welcome to what into the hellfire no welcome to hellfire hellfire club yeah like um and, and that song is probably my favorite song from um any australian artist okay f- for like it's just such a good song i'll have to check it out i'm not familiar with it it's like um deaf tony different oh, it's cool. different it's shoegazy but it's also not yeah Actually, that's a really bad way to describe it. It's it's very techy. It's like North Lane meets shoegaze meets. I uh, know that sounds different to me because they have that roots of the Australian tech metal. Mm-hmm. Even that song is still very techy. I was breaking it down in my head listening to it. It's not just chord strumming. This they're, they're still playing riffs under the singing. Yeah, but but shit like that where it's like you take everything that you liked about your band. Like I like I like the technical aspect of Thornhill, and I like how they make you feel something and you just bring it in a different context but it's still the same thing in the same package just packaged differently yeah um a lot of bands can't really do that too well because a lot of bands don't even know who they are yes they just replicate and regurgitate that's that's one thing i've thought with our band as well is um we don't have like an identity it's like we haven't found our sound yet does that make sense yeah I also struggle with that so Mm. instead of finding my sound in my note choices i found my sound in my sonic templates so um the hm2 pedal is a very big pedal for me mm-hmm. that really squished hyper aggressive tone that isn't like it's not like a bouncy boosted 5150 tone yeah um that became a sound which became a sound that i think of as something that is like a sound that i use it's not a sound that i've started off because it's a fucking hm2 everyone everyone's heard about it yeah but i, I i've been using it in a different context i used mm-hmm. it in like a like a beat down approach with dealer and okay, then i used yeah. it in a hardcore approach with pinsa and pinsa the other defining point about that is we write in b standard yeah i didn't want to drop tuning that wasn't like drop f or something because i wanted to see if i could do a heavy band in a tuning where i could play indie music and in. yeah um because like, my roots i started uh before i got into metal as a kid i played in the church oh, okay yeah. so a lot of my a lot of the free flow worship songs where they would play like a four chord progression and then just go completely by emotion and you got to read the band and play with them. Mm. That taught me a lot about writing. Yeah. Where it's, it's just probably a good, a good um, influence to have. Yeah. yeah. And all my tone choices and stuff is like atmospheric, lightly overdriven tones. Yeah. Um, and it all really just adds up to what I am now. All these little inputs from my my youth and also my friends around me yeah and i got like i keep saying i got lucky with everything i found but i believe that there is always a group waiting for you yeah 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 for sure yeah yeah definitely i think so too um i should probably wrap this up <laughs> i'm not i'm not too stressed yeah i uh, i should probably go out and uh do something Understandable. <laughs> i'm gonna get yelled at later <laughs> get spanked <laughs> I am dropping a single in a month, so before we go, I could send yeah. it to you if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Just so you have something to play on the stream. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh my, oh my, oh my. 
Baby, you're good, you're good, you're good with your fake love A, I covered in platinum, huh? Hopped in a cool, we built out west, out west, out west But I know you ain't feeling it Don't know if I'm gonna change it, yeah, I'm not gonna change I'll be racking my lines, yeah Baby, you want what I got, but I know that my family look out for me Cut dust, feeling crazy I took a trip to the 80s Life's been a drag lately I think I hate you, baby Cut dust, feeling crazy I took a trip to the 80s Life's been a drag lately I think I hate you, baby Taking my pills every day Angel might not even wake up Huh I take your bitch and she fuck on my ways And I make that shit like crack I've been on my wave lately She feel me like that I think all the perks I take Are gonna lay me out flat Cut dust, feeling crazy I take a trip to the 80s Life's been a drag lately I think I hate you, baby Cut dust, feeling crazy I take a trip to the 80s Life's been a drag lately I think I hate you, baby All my wrist been way too icy Not a Nike, but a bitch gon' hype me up Motherfuckers moving like a type B Claw my IV, drippin' harder than an iced tea, yeah Sippin' on somebody on Sprite clean Got no hygiene, got lean, I be trifling. Shotty been typing, ain't no caps, she took a liking I love you, I love you, she ain't no wifey Like, no, I, like I done fell in love, but it feelin' like hell All my ass on gas, it got me feelin' that smell Better my life down a wishing well She a well-known sweater, ain't no feelings felt Gotta pop these ends, I'm me feeling myself I'm me feeling myself I'm me feeling myself I'm me feeling myself Seeing boys on a daily Percocet and Molly crazy Too crazy, too crazy Took two more thinking they gon' save me Life's been a drag lately. I think I hate you, baby. Cut dust, feeling crazy. I took a trip to the 80s. Life's been a drag lately. I think I hate you, baby. Yeah, Not like a metal artist. That's cool, man. I like it. I want to just make something new. What did you use to to make the beats? Um, a lot of one shots from Reddit. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was saying. Like, I would just type in like Juice World drum kit or like this type drum kit, and I just stack up my sounds. And over the course of so the VSTs, the, are they? No, oh. literally like waves. Oh, okay, just waves of one shots, like, and then I'd use the inbuilt Reaper sampler for my drums. Okay, um, and then for the melodies, one of my friends made me that loop. Yeah, and all you're hearing is me just taking all the stems in and out, depending on what needs what. Yeah, added a guitar over it, um, put my own like bass patterns in that 808, and then all the mixing is just really like less is more. Yeah, I wanted it to just feel like a song yeah, on yeah. the radio. It's cool, man. Thank you. So in a month, so that's in a month that comes out, eh? July twenty eighth. July twenty eighth. No. For it, you heard it first here? Of course. At least <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> Before we go, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Why do you run this podcast? Um, <clears throat> I think um, because I've, I think I, I, was, I feel like I'm misunderstood and I wanted to speak to people and um, I like chatting with people a lot, having, having a good yarn with people and um, – and I wanted to meet more musicians in Perth and just hear people's stories. And, and I'm just interested in what people do and not even from music, just even people I work with, I'll be asking them how they got into the industry we're in. And some people look at me like, oh, who cares? And I'm like, oh, I care. I just, I'm interested. Um, you know, I just like to know what makes people tick. Um, and then, and then it's another thing is I wanted to get myself out there a bit because I feel like I'm misunderstood or people, uh, yeah, just don't understand me, I guess. And so I wanted to just chat with people and show them that this is who I am. And I guess, yeah, that's probably the main reason, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, that is, that's definitely the main reason, yeah. Just to want to 
get to know people and get myself out there really and and no one else is really doing it that I know of in Perth. There probably is people, but not that I'm familiar with. But not to this level too, where it's actually produced properly with mics and yeah, ring light. Yeah, yeah. There's I've seen some other ones that have been people just do it every now and then. It wasn't like a regular thing. Although mine has been, I've had a bit of a break for a while. Like the last guy I spoke to was was over not Zoom, something else. Um, I can't remember what it's called now. Some other program online um that was actually in- interesting um i don't know if you saw it come up but um his name's red pepper okay yeah he's, he's a um he's from um london but he's originally from uh, barbados and then i think he lived in america for a while he's okay. got an american accent and he does all the movie trailers or he did like oh, jurassic shit. park and armageddon and and all that that's crazy and he does heaps of video game stuff and um He's voiced one of my favourite video game characters of all time, this guy from a game called Shadow Man. And he voiced the main character of that. And when I was like 13, 14, I was fucking obsessed with that game. And um, and so I just happened to look him up online probably, probably a year or two ago and found him on Instagram and he didn't really have many followers because he's kind of a niche guy. He's just behind the scenes doing voices for, you know, the, you know this summer. Yeah, <laughs> shit like so that coming cool. to a cinema near you <laughs> that kind of stuff and um and then i just followed him on instagram and then i just liked a few things and commented on it and then he looked on my page and he said um and he sent me a message and he goes hey um i really like your music and i was like really and he's like yeah yeah and i was and he goes oh i run a radio station in london can i use some of your music and i said oh, i'll have to ask our manager because i don't know if you know the like flag up something on on youtube because he streams it on youtube as well if it's going to mm-hmm. like give him copyright i think i don't know how any of that works and um that was all good so i said yeah and then i thought it was a scam at first and um i said oh i think we should discuss it a bit more and he goes oh yeah he goes you're open to have a zoom meeting and i was like oh yeah no worries and he sent me a link and so we had the zoom meeting the next night and i was like there's no fucking way this is that guy and then sure enough he's on there he's like hey fabian how you going and i was like I was like, hey, and then, um, yeah, we chatted for ages and he just said that he, he seemed, he, he, uh, he said he thought I was like a, a real, real guy, you know, like, and, and genuine and, and he, and he just took a liking to me and, um, I just thought, man, it's so bizarre. I can't believe I'm talking to the guy that does, he's the guy that does the voiceovers for all the, um, for, he does Coca-Cola, Pepsi and heaps of shit. And so I had him on recently and we had a good chat and we keep in contact and we've become, good friends i guess pen pals i guess over the internet but um awesome guy and so um that was just some weird bizarre connection and, I love uh, that though. yeah i prefer to do it in person to be honest though because it's different yeah i did one with neil timon from carnifex as well because he's an ormsby artist as well oh, okay and so when he came over when they played i went to ormsby hq and met him and then um sent him a message on Instagram and teed that up. And then the, the artist chick from Ormsby, the artist relations chick, Amy, she's, um, she said they were going out for, for beers and that at Little Creatures. And I met him there and we had dinner and that. And then me and him have just become friends and keep in contact. And, um, and then we hung out a few times when they played their show, we were hanging out and, um, and then we did the, um, uh, podcast and he was just, we did it via Zoom. He was just on his phone. It was cool. It was awesome chatting with him, but it's just the quality is not there with Zoom. Yep. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's impersonable. You can't. You lose sit. that connection. Yeah, yeah. So I've hit other people up, like um over the years, like I um I met um I've spent quite a few of quite a bit of time over the years with um Machine Head when they tour, hung out with them. Like Rob Flynn got to be um not wouldn't say good friends, but good acquaintance with him, and then. Um, and then Phil Demmel and Jared from Machine Head and that. And um, and then I hit Phil up recently to come on the podcast and he's keen. But it's just like, I don't know if I want to do it over Zoom and all that. It's just, it's cool to talk to them guys. They're awesome guys and it's a pretty cool thing to be doing. But I just, I enjoy talking to them, but I just prefer this. It's you know personal. I mean? it's I'd rather personal. if artists come through town. I know Mandra's a long way away, but I'd go pick them up, you know. So, um. Um, I did hit up, I don't know if you heard of He's Legend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was speaking to their guitarist, um, Adam, on Instagram, but they just didn't have the time, but he was going to come down and come on the podcast as well, but just I'll didn't start. work out. 
I'll start shooting all the random international acts that I see coming here. I'll just shoot them your way. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Because I, I like this. This is a, yeah, this is something that's different than most podcasts and you have it. It feels real. Yeah, yeah. This is not scripted. Nothing we said was scripted. It was just us. That's, that's what I want it to be because I th- think you asked me, you said, oh, what do, what, do, what do you want to talk about when I come? I think, did you say? And I was like, I oh, know. whatever. <laughs> There's no agenda. There's no... Um, it's nothing like that. I just wanted to just hang out, chat, talk about whatever. I enjoyed off this the cuff, you know, way more than I've enjoyed any other like interview I've done. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Cheers. Yeah. It's, um, it's real. Yeah, that means That's a lot. That's the most important part to me. Yeah, thanks, man. Really appreciate Anytime. that. Um, and thanks for coming down as well. I of appreciate course. you taking the time out. I know you're busy and and uh, you've got a whole heap of things. I'm sure you want to be doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm having fun here. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I guess we'll probably wrap it up then. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Uh, anything else you want to get out of there? Nope. I've had fun. Yeah, yeah, me too. Thanks, man. Um, Pincer is playing a show with Void of Vision in, <laughs> I want to say August. <laughs> yeah. It's somewhere up there. Um, tickets are for sale and we've just dropped a volume one. So the mention of volume one implies volume two. <laughs> like naturally yeah no i'm not confirming or denying that <laughs> but the mention of volume one does imply a volume two yeah all no, right cool and if there is a volume two it has to come out at some point yeah and if there isn't a volume two then it won't come out <laughs> but if there is a volume two we'll be out at some point <laughs> so cryptic cryptic it's pretty cryptic <laughs> it's also because i don't know when volume two is coming <laughs> i need to at um, least you leave it pretty open-ended there so no, it's um. There's always if a band is silent, I believe that if you're silent, you're always working. Yeah, there's always stuff that's gonna happen. Yeah, and whenever you drop the next song, let me know. I'll push it around to. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Thanks. I, Perth needs more people who are good yeah. people. Yeah, thanks, man. I enjoyed this. Thank you for me inviting too. me over. Anytime, man. You're always welcome. Anytime. Thanks. <laughs>